Yes, I know you get all so I'll take it off. Okay. Ready? Yeah. When I was a teenager growing up in Leeds, I was sometimes nicknamed Rita. Not a hasten to laugh because I used to take middle-aged married men up on Belden Moor for a drink. <laughs> but because I used to start every sentence with the words, anywhere right. And um, my friends and my family, they all used to complain that I had very limited vocabulary. And I used to go, anywhere right. It's just because I'm speaking organic language. Language changes. English changes. That's what's wonderful about it. I'm just youth and I'm expressing my words. My mother, she absolutely despaired of me. She tried to teach me Latin once and she had to give up. She said, you don't actually understand English and I can't teach you Latin. And that was really illustrated one day, I was about 14, and I stubbed my toe really hard against the table leg, that fucking table. My mother said to me, a table is an inanimate object incapable of having sexual intercourse. It therefore, by definition, cannot be a fucking table. Please learn to speak English correctly. True story. But of course, the one thing that happens is we all turn into our mothers. Don't we? Oh, yes. So 30 odd years later, I am now the one who moans constantly about poor vocabulary and about bad use of English. I've actually turned into the grumpy old git that I always accuse other people of being because the truth of the matter is sometimes my blood just boils when I listen to other people like talking like all the time like and they're like saying all these things like guys and then they're like saying this stuff and sometimes they'll say do you know what it was like? Yeah, it was like what? What was it not dissimilar to? You know, is there actually is there actually a thought or a sentence in there? And sometimes they say these things, and I kind of think, are you not finishing your sentence because <laughs> you go, oh, 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 gee, it was like that. You think we all think the same as you, or is it because you think that I should know automatically what it was like, what you were thinking? And it's that thing about pushing everybody together, making us all the same that drives me mad, and guys is a particular thing. It's endemic. It's absolutely endemic. That was the email we got. Um, people use it all the time, and I think lots of people think it's become gender neutral, but I don't think it has. Because I'm a woman, I'm not a guy. And I don't think it would be gender neutral if the word was lasses or girlies. I don't think people would say that's gender neutral. I took my mum to buy a new phone and it was a special old person's phone and the bloke who sold us it, while he was explaining to us how to use this phone, he called us guys about ten times. My mother's 84 and I'm 46, you know, and I thought this really is not appropriate. It was also completely unnecessary. So is the North going south? I'm worried the North is going stateside. I'm worrying that actually we're all starting to talk in this bad American language that's been imposed on us by the media. Now, don't get me wrong, I actually love America. This isn't anti-American for me, I actually want to live there. And when I do live there, I will be really happy to watch television programmes by season. I'll be really happy to get my money out of an ATM. I'll be happy to have skinny coffee to go. I might even do the math. And if someone says to me, God, I really love the blue in your bangs, I might even go, awesome. But hopefully, hopefully, I will say it still with a Yorkshire accent. Because the truth of the matter is, we don't want to lose our accents, right? That is one of the things that I love about where we are, is the fact that we've got accents. And it's not just about accents and the fact that they're different. But a couple of years ago, I went travelling around the world and met a man in Australia. And he said to me, I've heard a rumour in England, you can tell where someone comes from by why or how they speak, as close as 50 miles apart. So forget 50 miles apart, what about 15? Take Leeds and Bradford and Wayfield. That is clear. Now that is organic language. That is how language develops when we all speak differently. It's not just about our accents. It's also about the words we use, the turns of phrase, the way we put our sentences together. And that is brilliant. I love that diversity and I love the fact it's going to change as years go by. I don't want us to all sound with some mid-transatlantic drawl like Simon Cowell because we're all getting it from American TV shows. When I was on this trip around the world, one of the things that was really great that we were really lucky to do was spend a lot of time in various English-speaking countries. And, you know, the fact that English is spoken so differently in all these different countries was just wonderful. 
and it gave moments of pure delight and pure wonder that will live with me forever. So I'm going to leave one from New Zealand. We were staying in a family home in New Zealand. The young lad of the home was out on some decking playing football with his mate and his mum shouted out to him whether he was all right. And he shouted back to his mum, sweet ass mum, we're just playing on the deck. 